Hi, my name is Joy and my group partner's name is Anthony and we're a part of the X-ray diffraction and crystallography course at Worcester Polytechnic University. And for this presentation, we're going to be covering the topic of wide angle X-ray scattering. For this presentation, we're going to be going over a brief history of X-rays and wide angle scattering, followed by an overview of wide angle scattering principles, common wide angle X-ray scattering setups, and typical uses and applications for wide angle scattering. X-rays were first discovered by a German physicist named William Rodigen in 1895. Although the nature of X-rays were not fully understood, they were immediately and widely used in medical and industrial fields. In 1912, X-ray diffraction and therefore wide angle X-ray scattering was discovered by Paul Kipping, Walter Frederick, and Max von Lau. This discovery proved the wave nature of X-rays and provided a new method of investigating the fine structure of matter. And this led to the development of Bragg's Law by Lawrence and William Henry Bragg in 1913. The measurement technique that is wide angle X-ray scattering is based on Bragg's Law, which states the essential conditions for diffraction to occur due to scattering. The Bragg's Law is n lambda is equal to 2d sine theta, where n is the order of diffraction, lambda is the x-ray wavelength, d is the atomic spacing in the planes of the atom, and theta is the angle at which diffraction occurs. While diffraction can occur at any two theta position, Wide angle X ray scattering specifically occurs when 2 theta is greater than 5 degrees. Samples for this are scanned using a wide angle gonometer. Then the scattered intensities are plotted as a function of 2 theta. Wide angle X ray scattering is most commonly used on polymers. Polymers have a crystalline or semi crystalline structure, and semi crystalline structures have crystalline and amorphous regions. The mix of these regions give the polymers a degree of crystallinity which determines the strength and rigidity of the material. Wide angle x-ray scattering is used to determine the crystalline structure and the degree of crystallinity in these polymers. This can be done because the amorphous regions in polymers produce significant scattered intensities in the wide angle range. The fluctuations of electron density in the sample over small lengths of about 10 nanometers produce maxima in scattered intensity at diffraction angles greater than 5 degrees. Sharp peaks in the intensity indicate uh, crystalline regions, and broad peaks indicate the fraction of the sample that is non-crystalline. Therefore, scientists can use this to determine the degree of polymerization, and therefore characterize the polymers. Now that we've gone over some of the history and background for diffraction and wide angle diffraction, let's get into some of the equipment and apparatuses that are often used with this measurement device. Wide angle diffraction apparatuses often use pinhole collimation with a monochromator between the sample and x-ray source. This can be seen in the figure on the right, which details both the x-ray source, the sample, and the detector. Filters are often also used to absorb the incoming x-rays and filter out the unnecessary alpha or beta lines that aren't needed. One of the more popular setups for wide angle diffraction is, the two is a 2D detection system based on the original configuration developed in 1912 by Nipping, Friedrich, and von Lau, where the sample is held constant and an instant beam is also held constant and st striking it forming the various Lau circles as we have discussed in class. This is seen on the figure on the right where you can see the different circles forming the D1, D2, and D3 spacings. Another use of wide angle diffraction is in symmetrical fiber diffraction which was developed in 1924 by J.D. Bernal and uses a cylindrical camera as well as a sample fiber that has both rotational and translational freedom and is used to help detect both the crystal structure 
and things such as layer lines for various fibers during the diffraction technique. Wide-angle diffraction can also be used for both symmetrical and asymmetrical reflection modes. In symmetrical reflection modes, the specimen is fixed in the horizontal position, and the incident beam and detector are rotated by theta degrees. As you can see in the image on the right, the specimen is fixed, while both the X-ray source and the detector can be rotated as seen in the image. In asymmetrical reflection, we have a pair of focusing mode which was developed in 1917. Here, the incident beam is fixed as seen in the image, while the sample and the detector are both rotated. The sample is only rotated by theta, while the detector is rotated by 2 theta, which you can also see in that image. Based on the, the listing above of some of the apparatuses and experimental techniques used by wide-angle diffraction, we can see that it is a powerful tool that can be used in many different applications. Some of the common applications that wide-angle diffraction is used is to help determine the degree of crystallinity in a polymer sample, the chemical or phase composition of a sample, the preferred alignment of crystals, and the crystal size. Some typical uses are in the pharmaceutical industry, detergent industry, food technology industry, pers personal care products, the polymer industry, or for medical diagnostics. We will now get into some examples that we will present of the uses of wide-angle diffraction. And more importantly, wide-angle x-ray scattering to investigate the structure of materials. The first advantage is that wide-angle x-ray scattering is non-destructive. This allows the sample to be tested repeatedly and to be also tested by other test methods. Wide-angle x-ray scattering can also be used on soft materials like gels and liquids and hair and textiles as long as it's prepared properly. It also works on very small samples and can resolve the Bragg spacing to between 0.33 nanometers to 0.49 nanometers. There are also several disadvantages to using wide-angle x-ray scattering. For example, as the angle of diffraction increases, the interference and noise encountered also increases. One of the things you'll run into is called Compton scattering, which is when incoherent waves crash, collide together and decrease the overall intensities seen on the graphs. This can be counteracted through filtering or possible rearrangement of the diffraction angle. Samples also must be pr properly prepared in order to work properly. Sometimes, when you're working with mixtures, wide angle x-ray scattering cannot detect trace materials in that mixture. In order to be detected, it needs to be greater than 2% of the entire mixture. And with wide angle x-ray scattering, the data is given in the reciprocal space, which can cause data interpretation to be challenging if you do not have the proper hardware set up on your computer. X-rays have been a powerful tool for medical diagnosis since the discovery of x-rays. Today, scientists can use synchrotron radiation to conduct wide angle x-ray scattering experiments on biopsies to diagnose health issues stemming from microcalcifications. These conditions can include keratosis, dwarfism, and pageant disease, aneurysms, and cancers in the form of prostate, breast, thyroid, and glyroid blastoma. In the image to the right, you can see that wide-angle x-ray scattering can be used to determine the different crystalline phases and sizes in an aneurysm biopsy sample. The sizes shown are micro, nano, and also the amorphous regions in the sample. Wide angle x-ray scattering microscopy allows for the localization and identification of different crystalline phases in the sample. This helps to assess the origin and composition of the calcifications and can help scientists to identify when the tumors change from benign to malignant. 
The image on the right shows a sample from a breast cancer tumor and how they were able to identify the calcification in the tissues when wide angle x-ray scattering was used in combination with small angle x-ray scattering. Scientists in another field can use wide angle x-ray scattering to help determine the date of ancient linen textiles in a non-damaging way. These textiles are made from natural fibers known as cellulose. Cellulose molecules are, have crystalline and amorphous regions. One of these molecules is known as a myrrh, and several is known as a polymer. The textiles can be dated by determining the cellulose's degree of polymerization. Over time, the degree of polymerization naturally decreases as cellulose decays. Since the structure of the polymer is known, scientists can use wide-angle wide angle, wide angle X-ray scattering as a non-destructive test that allows the sample to be tested repeatedly and by other traditional techniques that may damage it. The scientists can take a section of the scattered pattern represented by the red lines in the top picture and are able to plot the intensities showing that the intensity peaks are directly proportional to the age of the linen. It should be noted that this is a relatively new technique and was first documented in 2019. As previously mentioned, wide-angle diffraction techniques are often used to measure non-crystalline and semi-crystalline materials. In this example, we'll take a look at how this, this diffraction technique is used to characterize protective coatings. Protective coatings are often used to prevent corrosion and other degradation methods from affecting metallic substrates. These coatings often use additives to help protect the surface and extend the lifespan of the coating and underlying substrates such as zinc powder, aluminum powder, or various nanoparticles. In some cases, non-crystalline nanocomposites such as clays can be used as the nanoparticles for the protective coatings. In these instances, wide-angle diffraction techniques would be the preferred method to help characterize the protective coating due to the non-crystalline nature of both the nanoparticle and the coating itself. Wide-angle diffraction can then be used to help detect how well the clay has been dispersed throughout the polymer mixture of the coating. The figures on the right both show clay diffraction peaks in their diffraction patterns. As we can see, as it's mixed into the various coatings, the diffraction peaks both decrease in intensity and are shifted to mimic more of the pure epoxy diffraction patterns. This indicates the full mixture of the clay nanoparticles into the protective coatings. From there, diffraction peaks that are still present can be used to help detect the spacing and size of the nanoparticles still present in the matrix, which could be a valuable tool to help determine how well the clay nanoparticles hold up over time as they protect the, sub the, sub the substrate under attack by corrosion processes. Another use of wide-angle diffraction is in the detection of various chemical compositions. One example of this is in the detection of chemical corrosion inhibitors on a metallic surface. Besides protective coatings, surfaces can also be treated with inhibitors that slow down and prevent oxidation. However, these are not always easily able to be detected, and it can be costly to wait and see if they have been properly applied and are correctly protecting the surface. Therefore, using wide-angle diffraction, you can detect the difference in the chemical composition on the surface to see if the inhibitor has been absorbed and is present. The figure on the right shows how this is done, where the diffraction peaks for the untreated surface and the treated surface vary drastically, as you can see, between the red and the black diffraction lines. This is also then confirmed by SEM imaging, where you can see both the untreated and the treated surfaces have distinct fe different features. There you can see how the inhibitor is on the surface through both the SEM imaging and the diffraction technique. For further resources or readings, please refer to our bibliography section below. All resources are listed there. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening to our presentation on wide angle diffraction.